you have uh, recently made a tremendous contribution to our understanding of uh, the genetics of type 2 diabetes. Where do you think the field is going right now? Well, e even though we have found a number of genetic variants that explain type 2 diabetes, uh, there is a lot more that remain to be discovered. We've only found parts of the genome that are affected. Uh, finding the causal genes or the causal variants has not quite happened, so there's a lot of functional work that needs to happen. We need to expand into non-white populations. This has only been done mostly in European origin populations. And then we need to really find out whether knowing that genetic information will have an impact on either disease prediction or treatment. Now, for practicing uh, physicians out there, the, the technological developments in that area uh, have been simply remarkable. Could you summarize them uh, in a few sentences? Yes, well, what's happened maybe in the last five or six years is that, A, we have the entire sequence of the human genome. That was a big advance. Second, we understand genetic variation, at least common variation across populations. Um, third, we have the ability to query the entire genome in one single experiment. And fourth, we understand the sample sizes that are necessary to detect the effects. So the, the combination of those four things has made it possible to really ask questions at the whole genome level at a very efficient and, uh, and inexpensive manner. Now, as you pointed out in your lecture, uh, we have whichever susceptibility genes which interact with environment factors in, in the pathophysiology of type 2 diabetes. How do you see actually, uh, do you see that as a challenge capturing properly, you know, the environmental factor in the, the study of the genetics of type 2 diabetes? Absolutely. We can, we can very easily measure genetic variation with great precision at the individual level. But of course, as you know, capturing environmental uh, factors in the living, in the free living human is very, very hard. But in the, I think in the context of clinical trials like the diabetes prevention program, some of those factors have been quite well measured. And we have at least two examples in the diabetes prevention program where people who carry the high risk diabetes variant when engaged in the lifestyle intervention, that genetic risk is abolished and goes back to baseline. So the very positive message for our patients is that despite your genetic background and despite the sort of the bad deck of cards that inheritance gave you, if you just follow a good lifestyle intervention, you might be able to completely obliterate the genetic risk that is given you by your inheritance. Now, in the pathophysiology of, uh, of uh, type 2 diabetes, obviously, there's insulin resistance, but there are factors related to, to insulin secretion. Do you really think this is where the action is, insulin secretion? Well, I think as far as genetics is concerned, uh, a lot of it is in the, uh, at the beta cell. Um, it's probably a combination of the genetic factors you receive plus the environment, and I think the environment has a stronger effect on insulin resistance, and when superimposed on a background of poor insulin secretion or reduced beta cell function, then that both things combined give you type 2 diabetes. But if you have a perfectly competent beta cell that can make a lot of insulin, then insulin resistance should not make you hyperglycemia because you can compensate. It's when you have a defective way of being able to meet the demands that insulin resistance brings that uh, brings out the full phenotype.